Hello, welcome back to the Techimaki channel. Today we're going to continue the creation of our, our order taking system. In the last session we created the sequence diagram and now we are going to jump into designing the user interface piece, right? The front end. In order to design the front end, we are going to use Blazor and we are going to use Visual Studio Code. To do that, let's first install some prerequisites. Uh, we need to install some C Sharp and .NET extensions in the Visual Studio Code. Let's do it. The first one is the .NET Core. We're going to install the version uh, 3.1. This version 3.1 is available in .NET.Microsoft.com. In this link, you can find the installers for many OSs. So you have one for Linux, the other one for Mac OS. It's a binary. It's actually not an installer. And for the Windows, you have two installers, one for 64 bits OSs, and the other one for 32 bits which is the x86. Uh, all you need to do is click on these links and then install it on your machine. .NET comes with a very interesting CLI that you can use uh, in your bash or in your batch in order to start and create new .NET applications. Let's talk about a very interesting extension that I have just found for Visual Studio Code. It's called the .NET Core Extension Pack. This is a very popular set of extension packs for .NET Core. All you need to do is to find this one, click in here, and then click in install. All right, so it has actually installed a lot of extensions to give you productivity when you are developing in C Sharp using the Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now let's go back to the Explorer here and talk a little bit about some concepts. The first concept that we want to talk about is what is Blazor, right? Blazor is basically a technology, a solution that Microsoft has created to leverage the usage of the WebAssembly. And what is WebAssembly, right? WebAssembly is a technology that is being introduced on the browsers. And basically, it allows you to run compiled code, like a regular uh, native type of compiled code, on top of your browser. So your browser now can actually execute and run compiled code in C++. And this allows a lot of possibilities. And one of the possibilities is the work that Microsoft has done in order to put the .NET Core available to be executed on top of the WebAssembly. So basically you have the WebAssembly and then you have the .NET Core and you can run and compile .NET Core solutions and run .NET Core solutions on top of the WebAssembly and make it available for your client side. It's kind of a revolution on what has always been possible because before the only way for us to create code in the browser for the client was only by using JavaScript. So for the first time, we have the option to have our client code and back-end code using the same programming language. And this programming language doesn't need to be only JavaScript. This opens a lot of new possibilities. But hold on. What about other technologies from the past, like, for example, Silverlight? Aren't they the same thing? Uh, well, the answer to this is no. Basically, they are not the same thing. Silverlight was created on top of the existing browser solution as like a plugin, as an extension, as something on top of what is the standard of the internet. The WebAssembly is a open standard. It's actually something that has been built inside of all of the browsers. And there is an agreement between the capability and between what is the way that this capability works and how all the browsers as an standard are going to provide that. Finally, you don't need to install any third-party component in order for your solution to run using WebAssembly and Blazor. The size of the .NET Core and the Blazor components is very small if you compare to all the power that it provides you. So it's approximately uh, 1.8 megabytes. So it's a very acceptable size. And we can use a lot of strategies to download that on the background and even make it available in a cache. So as soon as you download it for one website, you can even reuse that for all the other websites. That can be achieved with content delivery networks. CDNs. So let's go straight ahead to the next concept that we need to talk about, which is progressive web applications. Let's go for it. P 
PWA stands for Progressive Web Applications. The idea is to leverage the capabilities of the modern browsers in order to allow much more capabilities than what we have today in regular web applications and also bridge the gap between a normal, regular native application and a web application. So there are three pillars that are fundamental when we talk about a progressive web application. One is capable, so it's a capable application. The second one is installable, so basically we can install just like a regular native application in our devices. And the third one is reliable, so we can have access every time that we want without being affected by the instabilities of connectivity, just like regular desktop applications. The list of PWA applications running today in production is extensive. You see a lot of big players with their websites running as progressive web applications. All right, so now we're going to start creating our website. We're going to start with the user interface piece. And uh, in our use case, I'm going to choose to build a restaurant that serves Japanese food. And it's going to be called Timaki. Okay, so this is the name that I'm going to use. First thing that I'm going to do is open the terminal. So I'm going to open the terminal here and type .NET new because I'm going to create a new project and type help just to see what are the templates that I have available so I can decide which one I'm going to choose. In this project, we are going to choose the Blazor WASM. Basically, this is an acronym for WebAssembly app. So let's do that. And then in order to create this, let's do .NET new. Let's choose the name of the app, Blazor WASM. And then let's choose what is going to be the name of our project. I'm going to call it tmaki.ui because it's the user interface. And then let's also specify that we want this application to be a PWA. After doing that, I hit OK. Actually, I hit Enter, sorry. And this is going to create the project for us. This is creating the project in a folder. So after the project is created, let's take a look a little bit on the main folders. The first folder is the pages that contains the basic pages of our website. Microsoft actually provides a default template for us. We're going to remove some files from there, but we're going to keep some others. And then there's the shared folder over here. In the shared folder, we have things that we probably are going to keep. These are the files that define the main layout of our website. And you can see here that we have a .razor as an extension. This is because uh, Blazor actually uses Razor Engine as a baseline. Razor Engine is a language, actually a markup language that allows you to have an interaction between what is text or a markup language and also some areas where you can put real code, real C sharp code. So then you can mix code in HTML. Razor, for example, doesn't pollute the HTML just like the old technologies like web forms used to do, for example. Okay, so let's just open the folder specifically on the tmaki.ui. It's better uh, for us to actually be able to debug and everything and create the VS Code files specifically on inside of that folder. So let's do that. Let's click in File, Open Folder, click on the tmaki UI folder, and let's select this specific folder. That's going to open the folder and then let's try to, for the first time, run the solution. In order to run the solution, we need to make sure that we have, just like it's describing here, it requires some more things in order to run this solution. What is going to be? One of the things is the VS Code instructions. Inside of this VS Code file, there is a launch.json file. This launch.json file has the information that the debugger needs in order to know how to start and run the debugger. The other thing that we also need to make sure that we have, and this comes with the default template of the Blazor WASM, it is the inspect URI. We need to make sure that we have that on the tmaki.ui and also on the ES Express profile, because this is the one that is going to create a proxy for us to debug our solution. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on run, is start debugging. When you click on this, what is going to happen is that it's going to ask you to select what is the type of debugger that you want to create. Select in this case Blazor WebAssembly debug. And when you do that, it's going to open a browser for you. And at the same time, it is doing two things. One is creating the debug proxy 
and the other one is starting a Kestrel server. These are two ports. One is the server port, that is the 5000, and the other one is the debugger port, that is 5001. In the first time, maybe it's not going to work properly, because that's what has actually happened in my case here. But it actually creates, when in this first time, if you click in open launch.json, it creates for you this file that is the launch.json inside of the VS Code solution. So all you need to do now is run again. Just make sure that you close this browser before you do that, so then it doesn't give you another error. This is a very important configuration that you need to have. The VS Code.VS Code folder needs to exist, and inside of this VS Code folder, you need to have the launch.json file. This file needs to contain a request launch if you want to start your debugger as soon as you start your application. So then you're going to have Blazor ready for debugging. In order for you to have content to debug, click on the counter.razor file. Let's click in this current count plus plus. So we're going to add a breakpoint over here, which we can use in order to make sure that we are properly debugging our solution. So now that you have the launch.json, Go back again and start debugging. Click in the run, start debugging, which is the same thing as hitting F5. Then it's going to run the server for us. One thing that is good for you to see is if you have the debug console, this needs to activate and show the proxy that is connecting with your instance of the Castro. And then in the terminal, also make sure that you see this second terminal here that is running your Castro server. In the 5001, you're going to see your application running here. And when you hit, for example, the button to increase the counter, this is going to activate your breakpoint. And then you're going to be able to debug properly and see what are the values in the current count. And also, you're going to be able to see when it increments. So you can just continue to do that. And you're going to see the increment over here. If you want to stop, you just click in Stop. All right, so we reached out to the end of our first video on the user interface of our system. In the next video, we're going to talk about the creation of our first front-end component, the menu component. If you want me to design another system, please give me a suggestion on the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the notification button in order to receive notifications about new videos. See you soon on the next video, where we are going to continue the journey.